Alright, so I, I'm gonna give a, just to try to be really quick, we we'll give a little backstory. I think actually a huge part of why we started this garden is we lost faith in civil in that civilization was going to continue. We weren't saying it wasn't going to, but we lost faith that it was. And we really wanted to be much more connected to our food source. And you know, we watched all these documentaries, like many of you probably have about everything that's wrong with the world. And at some point we got, we, one day, this is this year, we said, you know what, I don't want to hear any more about what's wrong with the world. I'm so aware of all of the problems. I want to hear about what's right with the world. And the very next day, we were at the Venice Learning Garden, which is an amazing resource if you're not familiar with it. It's on Venice Boulevard in Walgrove. So we were there for a little lesson on planting, and we met this guy, and he said, oh, you have to see this movie called Back to Eden, and we're like, is, uh, we're expecting here, it's about pesticides and how Monsanto is taking over the world. And he's like, no, 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 it's about what's right. And so I highly recommend this film. The website is backtoedenfilm.com. It's free. It's on Vimeo. And basically the story goes that this, gar this farmer named Paul Gauchy moved to, to the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State, and he had... He had terrible luck with his farm. He had been in Southern California where we, fortunately, everything grows like candy here. It's just the most ideal place for gardening almost on earth. And he, now he's in this really difficult environment and he can't get anything to grow. And he's, he's depressed and he goes out into the woods and he says, God, help me. And, and God responds to him according to him and says, you know, look, look at your feet. And what do you see? And the first thing he noticed was that there was no bare soil. And that there was mulch everywhere. The pine trees dropped the pine needles and the leaves dropped. And it was always covered. There was a skin. And this is a man, he's a very Christian man. But it's, it's in a beautiful way. It's not like trying to turn you Christian or something. And he said, he, it just came to him all of a sudden that this is what it meant that we had been cast out of Eden. We cast ourselves out of Eden, and we did it by breaking up the skin of the earth and tilling the earth and creating and, and uh, exposing the dirt and then having to toil by the sweat of our brows. All this hard work that we have considered farming for the past 3,000 years. And so he started, he did a bunch of experiments, and what he came to ultimately was to take chipped trees. So this is, this is, Here's the first thing, chipped trees. So what that means is that people all over, you know, because of either their neighbors or it seems like the trees are going to, they, they don't want the shade anymore. For whatever reason, trees are always getting cut down. And so there are these services, you have to pay a bunch of money and they'll come and they'll chip your tree. And the people that chip the trees, they need, they don't, they have to dispose of it. It costs them money. So they will actually, if you can get connected with them, they will actually come to your house and just leave you a chipped tree for free. And so he started experimenting with this. And what he did is he basically took newspaper and he put it directly onto soil or grass or anything like that. And then he put a layer about 6 to 12 inches of, of a chipped tree. And this is very different from what you would see in like Beverly Hills or something of wood chips, you know, where it's all the same size because you don't want all the same size. You want all these different sizes, some this big, some that big, some that big, some that big, leaves, branches, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because what that starts to do is it starts to mimic nature. It's a perfect harmony. The bugs can live in there. It has enough... Uh, space for things to crawl around but it's compact enough that weeds can't really grow through it. It's, it's like as, you, as the logic of this becomes more and more clear to this guy he realizes that God has created a perfect system already and it's all around us and the evidence is all around us because you go into the woods and there's no gardener and everything is growing and it smells fresh and there's, it's green and there's life and no one did anything to make that happen. And so more and more he starts to attempt to mimic this system, to turn his garden into what he would call God's garden or just nature's garden. And he, as, as he did this, he found all of these amazing benefits. There's a thing in gardening called thinning, thinning out. 
that's a very basic thing where you plant in a little thing you put like six seeds and then they all start growing and then you're supposed to wait until they're about that tall and you cut with scissors all of the ones except the strongest one so what Jenny in particular always hated this thinning out she's like why are we doing you know there's like six perfectly beautiful plants and now we're cutting five we're killing five of them so with this system, I don't even know if you, if we've talked about this, but the, as it builds up, you don't have to thin out anymore because they can just all push out. The reason you have to thin out is because they, they're, they'll just tie each other up. But as the soil gets looser and fluffier, you don't have to do any of that. So the idea really, when Jenny and I implemented this, we had a very real feeling, and I mean this very sincerely, that we really were at least on the path of really returning to the Garden of Eden. And, and we felt such a sense of ease descend into our life that it was just, it was going to be all good. All this, all this stuff that had previously kind of inspired us, like, you know, get, get the shotguns and zombie apocalypse and financial, cl it's like, dude, whatever, you know, good luck. Uh, <laughs> and then it's just, it's just okay. And things are just going to work out when I started getting into gardening, and this is what I would like to pass on to people, I didn't know anything, and it was incredibly overwhelming. I mean, there is a lot of information, and conflicting information, and this method, and that method, and all of this. And it all is complicated. There's like a lot, it's like school. It's like going back, and it's like, you gotta, oh, you gotta know, you gotta know about the nitrogen. If you don't know about nitrogen, what do you, you gotta know the nitrogen. And, and it's, it's nitrogen, and it's, pests and it's this and it's that it's all this information and this kind of just kills all of that you can forget all this information just start going back to natural things yes you probably still have to work yes you may even still have to work a lot but there's an ease to the work there's this real beautiful simplicity it makes me think this is this is, this is the end for me uh, I believe it's Bertrand Russell, who's a famous mathematician and philosopher. It might have been Buckminster Fuller. It's one of the two of them who said that if something is not, if a solution is not simple, simple and beautiful, it's not the right solution. And that was my feeling with gardening up until discovering this whole concept, was that something is wrong. Like, I just, like... Just my intuitive feeling was something about what I'm learning is incorrect because this is way too complicated for something that people have been doing for a hundred thousand years and you know uh, on and on and on and when when I discovered this it was like thank you it was wrong it was insane this is not how things should be done there is a simple way it's easy for any person to understand you don't need a master's degree you don't even need a high school degree it, there, it's just easy.